Hello everyone. This video is dedicated to the students of class 12, especially the examinees appearing the final examination commencing from 9th Mongsi 2077. In this video, I am going to summarize five poems prescribed in the heritage of words. So without delay, let's begin our poems. The first poem prescribed in the heritage of words is grandmother you can see here on the board it is a short but beautiful composition a beautiful poetic composition by an american indian poet named ray young beer as i said it is a short poem it is a short but beautiful poem how because it is a nostalgic poem it is a nostalgic poem nostalgic means the memories of the beautiful memories the sweet memories of the past the speaker that means the grandson in this poem is memorizing the beautiful moments the beautiful time that he had spent with his grandmother yes the poet seems to have been brought up the poet seems to have spent most of his time his childhood with his grandmother and he remembers all those beautiful moments he expresses his deep emotional attachment i repeat the phrase deep emotional attachment yes the poet seems to have very deep emotional attachment with his grandmother because in the lines of the poem he clearly mentions almost all his sensory perceptions, all his sense organs. They were so closely associated with his grandmother that he could easily identify her. As in the lines, the beginning lines, if I were to see her say from miles away, that means the boy could easily identify his grandmother from long distance just by seeing her physical structure. She would be carrying a plastic shopping bag in her hand and there would be a purple scarf around her neck. That means the poet vision, sense of vision. Here he talks about the sense of vision. He sense of vision could easily identify his grandmother the plastic shopping bag the purple scarf and the physical structure the shape of his grandmother all these words they are evoking our sensory perception sense of vision sense of sight similarly the poet says he could easily feel the gentle touch of his grandmother with warm and dark hands having the smell of roots further he says he could easily identify his grandmother when he would hear the words coming from the rock here we come to know that the poet's grandmother is no more in the world but the memories of the grandmother the instruction the inspiring words of the grandmother the guidance of the grandmothers the supervision of the grandmothers they are still in the memories of the poet and the poet still feels that those words of grandmother those inspiring words of grandmother are guiding him they help him take the decisions even today in his life those words of grandmother coming from the rock they would flow inside him they would give him enlightenment like the light coming from a sleeping fire to sum up the entire poem we see is a beautiful picture of the grandmother it is a depiction of the characteristics of the grandmother the poet's grandmother who has ever been loving inspiring caring and she plays a magnificent she plays a vital role in shaping the poet's character the poet's personality the poet gives all the credit of his achievement of his personality of his success 
to his grandmother he believes whatever he is today is all because of his grandmother the poet has used a number of images to create a lively picture of his grandmother for example the the shape of his grandmother the plastic shopping bag in her hand the purple scarf round her neck the sleeping fire or the light coming from the sleeping fire all these images they appeal to our sense of vision similarly the 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 warm and dumb hands the warm and dumb hands that appeals to the sense of touch and the smell of roots the smell of roots coming from hand the smell of roots of course appeals to our sense of smell and the words coming from the rock that is from the tombstone that evokes our sense of hearing in this way the poet has used these images that occupy that associate almost all our sensory perceptions it means the poet is so attached so close with his grandmother that all his sense organs they are habituated with her though very short the poem has powerful symbolism symbolically grandmother represents the native roots of america that means the originality the norms and values the genuine traditions customs values of the native americans who seem to be overpowered who seem to be marginalized because of the growing popularity and influence of the modernity especially the mescaly tribes in american soil is banishing the originality of the mescaly tribe is banishing in american soil hence the poem is a metaphorical expression of the painful awareness of the identity loss it is a quest for the originality identity by the native americans who are marginalized who are influenced by the modernity in american soil the second poem you see on the board is the lamentation of the old pensioner which is composed by w b s an irish poet and dramatist william butler s in this poem the poet tries to express his anguish his sorrows his pain at the loss of his colorful young days his romantic days his beautiful moments that he used to have during his youth but he has nothing now in his old age he compares himself with a broken tree in the poem he believes he feels that his condition is no better than a broken tree which is useless isolated ignored and a broken tree is no more useful a broken tree neither provides fruits no uh, not shelter from the from the heat and heat of the heat or scorching sun or it can cannot it cannot even protect you from the rain the poet says although i shelter from the rain under a broken tree means the poet takes shelter tries to take shelter from the rain under a broken tree but the broken tree has no branches it has no leaves it does not have bushy leaves thick leaves to protect him to give him protection from the rain and he starts comparing his condition his present condition he starts comparing his present condition present isolated condition present painful condition with the romantic powerful energy
energetic and colorful days of the past during his past he was so dashing he was so influential he was so dominant figure that in all the discussions of life either law or politics career business in every sectors in every field he was very ahead he was very dashing he was very he had magnetic influence among his friend circles but now because he is old all those things have gone away from his life and the poet blames the time he says time is responsible in fact the poet is an old pensioner an old pensioner you understand the person who depends on pension after retirement yes a company or an organization hires the workers the employees the employees work for some years certain years maybe 10 years maybe 15 years and after working for certain years in old age when the employee when the worker is no longer capable of giving the same uh, you can say the same quality the same quality to his work the same time if he is not means in old days the employee is not able to give the same responsibility he is not able to work the same way and that's why the company gives him a retirement now you are no longer useful for the company so he gets retirement and he depends on pension pension means certain percent of the salary is provided to the employee after retirement now the pension holder is the pensioner so the old pensioner he recalls he looks at his present condition painful isolated loneliness because everyone has everyone has deserted him nobody likes to spend his time with the poet now because he is no more beneficial no more useful no more energetic active dynamic he had changed and time is responsible he says time is responsible for all the changes all the beautiful moments all the beautiful moment time that poet used to have has been taken by snatched away by time and that's why he blames time he says before time transfigured me or time transfigured me before time transfigured him before time changed him he was also very dashing he was also dominant he was influential but now he is no more useful similarly in the next moving to the next stanza he says now no girls looked look at him in his youth during his youth he was very romantic he might have been a playboy you can say because he used to be surrounded by the beautiful girls around him but now not a single woman looks at him because he had wrinkles in his face just imagine the image of the picture of an old man having wrinkles on the face white hair the big powerful glasses and even uh, carrying a walking stick in old days a person is not even able to uh, walk properly on his legs and therefore he needs the support of a walking stick and the vision the sense of the sense of sight also becomes weak and that's why the the, the old people they require the powerful glasses and eyes similarly the wrinkles on the face now who will look at such ugly looking person but in young days he was surrounded by the beautiful ladies around he remembers those beautiful moments and he feels jealous now 
Similarly, again he says time is responsible for all the changes and then he talks about the young generation. The young generation today, they are trying to gain power, position, they try to they try to influence themselves, they try to uplift themselves following all means, fair, unfair, all the means, but they are not aware that one day, one day all these things will be taken over, taken away by the time. So the poet says, I don't have complaints against those young generation. I have complaints against the time. Time is responsible and thus the entire poem deals with the painful memories of the poet. Painful memories because whenever the poet recalls those beautiful moments of the past and compares his present with the past, present is isolated, present is ignored, exiled. He is living in, in, a, in a corner like an old furniture, ignored furniture and his those young beautiful days, the, the period when he was young, energetic, smart, handsome, dashing, he was surrounded by the friends, circle, girls, the beautiful girls, thus the boy is painful memories and therefore in anger because the poet has sheer complaint the poet has sheer complaint against the time that's why he said I spit into the face of time remember we spit in two situations when something disgusting is there when we find something disgusting we spit and we also spit at someone or something when we are very angry, when we are furious at someone or something, we say, I spit. So the poet also says, I spit into the face of time that has transfigured me. In short, let us talk about the technicality of the poem. The poet has used the title, The Lamentation of the Old Pensioner, which is very meaningful. In fact, it is the theme of the poem. The summary of the poem is included in the very title itself. Similarly, the poet has used refrain. Now, what is refrain? Refrain is the repetition of a line or phrase in the different stanzas of the poem or different paragraphs of a fiction that may be a story that may be essay and so on so repetition of a line now in this poem we find the line before time transfigured me time has transfigured me he repeats this line in every stanza at the end of every stanza you find this line being repeated this has a purpose a meaningful purpose the poet in fact wants to highlight the fact that time is the most powerful element in the world that no one can escape from the influence of time time has the power to make everything and everyone come to dust and another motive of the refrain is to produce the musicality in the poem. It produces the musical quality in the poem and of course enhances the beauty of the poem. Thus we can see the poem is beautiful composition of WBA. The poem Full Fathom High Thy Father Lies by William Shakespeare is a beautiful example of alliteration. Now what is alliteration? Alliteration is the repetition of the initial consonant sound. You see the initial consonant sound full, for, fathom, for, five, for, thy, father, for, the for sound being repeated. And this repetition, this is the consonant sound and the initial. 
initial consonant sound being repeated is called alliteration and the title full fathom five by father lies is a beautiful example of alliteration the poem is an extract taken from the drama the famous drama of william shakespeare the tempest and probably it is the last drama of william shakespeare the tempest in this drama the poem occurs as the words of consolation by a spirit named Ariel to the Prince of Naples. The Prince of Naples, Ferdinand, happens to be separate on a magical island because a sea storm has wrecked the boat, the sea in which he was traveling with his father. And he on the island mistakenly believes that his father is drowned in the sea and he is contemplating his mourning at the death of his father. Now at the same time an Ariel appears, the spirit named Ariel appears on the island in front of Ferdinand and tries to console him, tries to sympathize him with the words. He says that you need not worry about, you need not mourn for the death of your father because your father is lying 30 feet below the sea in the depth of water. Fathom, one fathom is equal to the 6 feet measurement of the depth of water and thus 5 fathom, 5 fathom means 30 feet. Your father is lying 30 feet below the sea in the depth of water. He is in a kingsly position of his bones are coral made. It means his bones are made into his bones have changed into coral. His eyes have converted into pulse. Pulse and corals are the precious gems, precious elements. They are very expensive elements found in the sea. Therefore, you need not, he says, the Ariel says, you need not mourn for the death of your father because he is lying in the depth of water. He is in majestic position. Every hour the sea nymphs, every hour the sea nymphs are responsible to him and they ring the bell. You can hear the bell. The ding dong bell, thus the poet says, the poet tries to sympathize, thus the poet tries to console Ferdinand that he should not mourn at the death of his father because even after death, his father's body has not been changed into meaningless or useless thing. In fact, Every element of his father's body means every organ of his father's body has been converted into something precious, something valuable, something meaningful and therefore it is, it is not good to mourn at the death. It is not wise to mourn at the death. Thus the poet has a meaningful message to the readers that death is inevitable we cannot avoid the death the poet wants to communicate that even after death people survive in the memories in the contributions they have made to the world to the society and therefore it is unwise it is not sensible to mourn for a long time at the death of someone because we must accept it as a law of nature an unavoidable fact that we must accept let's talk about the technicality of the poem the poet has used the technical elements in the poem like onomatopoeia alliteration and assonance these elements these technical elements enhance the beauty of the poem. They highlight the motive of the poet. For example, you see, anomatopoeia. Anomatopoeia is 
the imitation of the sound in imitation of the sound of something it might be animals or it might be nature here the word ding dong ding dong is the sound it is an imitation of the sound of a drum being beaten here at the death of someone a drum is being beaten while the dead body is being carried to the graveyard a drum is being beaten that produces the sound ding dong sound this is harsh this is hard sound harsh sound rough sound here these sounds ding dong it reminds it reminds the bitter reality the hard reality that everyone must die everyone is born to die someday that is the communication that is the indication of the harsh sound of ding dong similarly alliteration i told at the beginning as well alliteration is the repetition of the initial consonant sound in different words of the same line here full fathom five thy father lies the four sound being repeated in the same line that is the best example of uh, you see alliteration in this poem and now assonance assonance is the repetition of the vowel sound i repeat assonance is the repetition of the vowel sound here you see phi in phi i sound is repeated thy in thy i the sound i is there and then in lies i is there i i i in phi thy and lies this vowel sound is the repetition of this vowel sound is assonance thus the poem is very meaningful it shows it highlights the meaningfulness of death the poet says that death is meaningful because after death the body converts into the elements our body is composed of of different elements and after death those elements mingle in the same from where it is originated and that's why the death is meaningful according to the poet the next poem you see on the board is traveling to the dark it is a poem by a famous american poet william stafford william stafford in this poem traveling to the dark is trying to present a conflict between two systems of life two realities of life he presents a dilemma where a person is an individual is confused is unable to decide it is difficult for him to decide which side to go with on one hand are the efficiency rationality reason and on the other hand there are feelings emotions and sentiments now everyone every individual sometimes comes in a situation when he or she has to decide what to choose which side to go with whether we should go with the reason our rationality our efficiency or we should take the side of emotions feelings it is difficult to decide so this kind of conflicting situation is presented in the poem the situation is the poet was traveling the poet was a traveler the poet was traveling through the forest at night now on the wilson river road wilson is the name of a river on wilson river road he happened to stop his car because he saw something or hit up something in darkness on the road in the middle of the road 
Now he stopped his car, he came out of his car, went close and he saw that there was the dead body of a deer, a female deer. There was a female deer dead on the road, in the middle of the road. It might have been killed in an accident. Some rash drivers might have hit the deer and the poet was unable to go ahead because the pass the road was narrow it was the narrow road and the poet was not able to go ahead crossing then he stopped his car and he started thinking what to do when he went close to the body when he went uh, when he approached the body of the deer he found that the deer was pregnant it was big in belly and the side of the the side of the belly was still warm means there was a baby deer there was a fawn there was a fawn in the womb in the womb of the deer the female deer the baby deer in the mother's womb was still alive but never to be born now the poet hesitated standing beside the mountain road the boy was unable to decide whether he should push the deer into the river or he should leave it on the road if he pushes the deer into the river the baby that is still alive in the womb of mother but never to come in the world will also die and indirectly the poet would be responsible for the death of the baby deer and if he leaves the deer on the road as it is there might be the chances of some other accidents some other death now this was the conflict it before the poet and the car parked on the road the car the engines of the car is still on it warns the poet it reminds the poet to hurry up to take a decision instantly immediately because he has to reach his destination if he stays there if he stands there holds there for a long time thinking over the good and bad aspects if he starts if he gets confused if he is between the reason rationality emotions and sentiments he won't be able to complete his journey on time he has to reach his destination on time that's why the poet finally takes the side of his judgment he takes the side of his reason rationality and he pushes the deer into the wilson river let us talk about the tone of the poem the tone of the poem is of course sympathetic because the poet throughout the poem is expressing his sympathy for the speechless innocent wild animals which become the victims of some rash drivers some rash drivers careless drivers in adventurous mood for their thrill seeking nature they travel at night they drive at terrifying speed through the forest at night and they make the wild animals victims of their carelessness the title of the poem is also significant because the title says traveling to the dark you see traveling or driving 
itself is a dangerous, a risky, an adventurous zone. And while traveling through the forest and at night, that is even more risky, even more adventurous. And that's why the poem has expressed the adventurous, thrill-seeking nature of the drivers, the people who sometimes, because of their carelessness, unknowingly maybe make the animals the victims, the animals lose their lives. The last poem, God's Grandeur by a religious poet Gerard Manley Hopkins, G.M. Hopkins, is a holy sonnet in which the poet praises the magnificence, the greatness, the glory, the grandeur of God. Here, the title itself says God's grandeur, means the poet is expressing, the poet is appreciating, the poet is praising the greatness of God, the grandeur of God, the glory of God. He believes that everything in this universe, everything in this world is operating. Everything, every life, living, non-living creatures, animals, everything is operating because of the God's will. The world is charged with the grandeur of God means the world regains, the world receives the energy, the power, the strength and everything is on action. Everything is working regularly. Everything is functioning because the God is providing the power, the strength, the invisible power of God. The invisible power of God is present in everything in this universe. God is the source of all power, strength, energy required for the operation of the world. All living and non-living elements in this universe, in this world, they gain the function, they gain the regular function, they are operating, they take their regular cycle because of the God's will. In spite of this, human beings, they are unaware. In spite of this, human beings are disrespectful, they don't have response, they don't have fear from the God because human beings have exploited the nature, exploited the earth, they have trodden the earth from generations, they have brought the earth from generations, many generations and generations have exploited the nature, exploited the earth, they have grown crops many times, but the earth still has the fertility. The earth still has, the soil still has the productive capacity. It has not lost the productive capacity, the fertility, because God provides the energy from the invisible. The invisible source of energy is God. God provides its, the fertility, the productive capacity, and the earth is able to provide us the crops again and again. Although the nature has been used, has been, has been uh, many times, the nature has been exploited many times from generations, it is never spent. It still regains its freshness because deep within the thing there lies the freshness that comes from the miracle of God. Despite the commercialization, industrialization, overconsumption of the nature, the nature still remains beautiful. The nature still remains strong and powerful 
because the power of God lies in the nature. Not a single leaf can move without the will of God. That is the message, that is the theme of the poem. The poet in each and every line in the poem, he is praising, he is appreciating the magnificence of God. He wants to express his deep religious faith, his deep respect to God because he believes, he has deep faith that God is omnipotent, omnipresent and omniscient. These three terms, omnipotent, omnipresent and omniscient, summarizes the entire theme of the poem. Thank you very much. I hope this video will be very useful to you and to the examinees appearing the final examination commencing from uh, 9th Mangshir 2077. I wish you all the best. Thank you once again. Best of luck. Thank you.